Well, to the my God. Oh, hello. Welcome to another edition of I Am Over Sunny with me, Aaron Masani, at Aaron Masani on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, now, you may be wondering why I'm polishing silver, why I'm cleaning the flat. Normally, I start these I Am Over Stanis at my desk working on the Navarra Media dank meme stash. I'm cleaning not because my better half has instructed me to, not because I want to, but because, of course, it's the Queen's birthday next month in April, and I thought I would join the nation in this celebration of our monarch's 90th birthday by participating in Clean for the Queen. Now, some of you may have seen pictures from the launch of that campaign, Clean for the Queen. It's on Twitter. They've got a Twitter account. They've even got a hashtag. Uh, some of the pictures included Michael Gove, Boris Johnson. Uh, it looked pretty weird, right? And it confirmed to me one of two things. Either I'm already dead and I'm in hell, or more likely, at some point in the mid-1980s, humanity was kind of put into a sort of Tory fash virtual reality simulator overseen by Charles Sarchi and Barbara Windsor. What's funny, or actually for me anyway, rather angering, is that people like Michael Gove and Boris Johnson are incapable of cleaning their noses, let alone streets. And when we're talking about the Queen, I mean, this is astonishing, right? Her forebears, right until the break of the 20th century, actually employed a specific person, they were called the groom of the stool, to wipe their asses. That's right, there was a, an employee in the royal household who did nothing but wipe the bums of the royals, right? This is until the break of the 20th century. So the idea that these people can even look after themselves is ridiculous. Uh, her kids, her useless kids, Charles, uh, Andrew, her grandchildren, I mean, they won't even be able to tuck their, their shoelaces. So who does clean for the Queen? Well, unsurprisingly, it's not Oxbridge graduates like Boris Johnson or Michael Gove. For the most part, it's women of colour, non-EU migrants from Latin America, South America, to a lesser extent, West Africa. What's more, despite working in some of the most plush, opulent surroundings on the face of the earth, places like Buckingham Palace, they are paid a pittance, with many working in poverty. As recently as 2011, cleaners at Buckingham Palace won £6.45 an hour. If they were working a 40-hour week, annualised, that was around £13,500 a year, almost half the average UK wage, and clearly not enough to survive in London. Now, some might struggle to understand how a woman, a family, by some measures the richest, wealthiest woman in the world, also, of course, receives a big state subsidy called the Royal List, about £30 million a year, paid for by, well, you and I, right, the taxpayer. These cleaners are taxpayers too, they pay things like VAT, even if they're below a certain threshold to pay income tax. Some would struggle to see all that personal wealth and all those state subsidies still leaving employees cleaning up after these people living in poverty, right? Having kids, two, three, four to a room. Having to take two, three buses to work every morning. Having to scrimp and save and absolutely, you know, enjoy none of the pleasures of life. Some people would take offence to that. Well, the answer from Buckingham Palace at the time, of course, was not our problem, not our fault. They're subcontracted, they've been outsourced. Go talk to the outsourcing company. So here in microcosm is the British labour market, particularly for low pay service work at its worst. Very, very, very precarious, very poorly paid, very few statutory rights, and all okayed and legitimated through the plausible deniability of outsourcing. It's not our problem, Jack. Blame the company we outsourced it to. Well, for the royal family who receives so much money from the taxpayer, that isn't good enough. In fact, it's downright disgusting. And let's be honest about this stuff. It's highly racialized, right? These people being so heavily exploited, being so heavily demonized and castigated in the mainstream media, they're brown and black working class women. Nobody cares about them. They're invisible. It's like they don't exist. Take the story of Dawn Butler, a Labour MP, She's an MP. She got in a member's lift in the House of Commons and she was told, she was informed by one of the other MPs, uh, an older man, that the lift was exclusively for members of the House, not for cleaners. His presumption of her being a cleaner was because she was a black woman. A few years ago, I spoke to cleaners at the University of London who'd chosen to unionise. By doing that, they'd not only won the London living wage, but sick pay, holidays and pensions too. They'd won through organising, the only way it's possible. It's people like them that, you know, clean for the Queen in reality. It's people like them that clean up after the most wealthy, affluent people, not just in London, but across this country. Like I say, working class women of colour. 
and in the process they live in poverty. In terms of the political debate, they're ignored. I mean, they're literally invisible. Nobody talks about them. Nobody talks about their grievances or representing them. And in fact, worst of all, they're often demonised through both the lens of race and of gender. Toffs talk about the migration issue while all the people are cleaning up all their shit. These people, right? Yeah. You're recording. Work shy, lazy scroungers living on state benefits. I'm referring to the royal family, of course. Have cleaners who look after them, do all their stuff for them, that are paid a pittance, they're in work poverty. Meanwhile, their gophers, their friends, and sometimes even their relatives, like one Jeremy Hunt, a distant cousin of the Queen, are in the House of Commons telling all of us to pull up our sleeves, do our bit, and God bless the Queen. Well, I don't think, actually, these people or the royals are public servants. I think they're a public disgrace. There's lots of things you can do to celebrate the Queen's 90th birthday in April. I can think of so many, right? Uh, you can even think about what a post-monarchy country would look like. Who knows? We might even have a Britain where in-work poverty doesn't even exist anymore.